Greetings, Phil West here with the Tomorrow's World webcast. On September 20, 2016, in his final speech to the UN General Assembly as President of the United States, Barack Obama stated, quote, Time and again, human beings have believed that they finally arrived at a period of enlightenment, only to repeat then cycles of conflict and suffering. Perhaps that's our fate. We have to remember that the choices of individual human beings led to repeated world war. But we also have to remember that the choices of individual human beings created a United Nations, so that war like that would never happen again. Each of us as leaders, each nation, can choose to reject those who appeal to our worst impulses and embrace those who appeal to our best. For we have shown that we choose a better history." End quote. Interesting comments coming from President Obama, for we certainly have, over the course of the last 6,000 years of human experience, suffered from cycles of relative peace only to round the corner to conflict and suffering. Human history, sadly, has been written in suffering and blood. The United Nations was formed after World War II to try to prevent another world war from ever happening again. And just like so many man-made institutions, the UN has had its share of both successes and failures. The prospect of nuclear war, in spite of all the man-made institutions, is still a very real and growing threat. The doomsday clock was adjusted to just three minutes to midnight in the year 2015 and remains there today. According to the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists, the Doomsday Clock was created in 1947, quote, using imagery of apocalypse, midnight, and the contemporary idiom of nuclear explosion, or countdown to zero, to convey threats to humanity and the planet. The clock has become a universally recognized indicator of the world's vulnerability to catastrophe from nuclear weapons, climate change, and emerging technologies in the life sciences." End quote. So here we are experiencing some incredible advancements in science and technology, and yet the world at large lives with the increasing probability of nuclear annihilation. Deuteronomy chapter 4 reveals that God intended for ancient Israel to set an example for the nations around them. He gave them His laws and told them that if they kept His law and were careful to keep His statutes, then He would bless them. Other nations would be drawn to God through their example of obedience and blessing. Sadly, ancient Israel failed. Why? Too often they neglected to obey God. They worshipped idols and disobeyed God time and again. What history did they choose? The same one modern Israelite nations such as the United States, Great Britain, and other English-speaking nations have chosen. One written in suffering and blood. So where is all this going to end? Jesus states in Matthew 24, verses 21 through 22, For then there will be great tribulation, such as not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. The United Nations will be unable to prevent the most cataclysmic time in human history. Nationally, no, we will not choose a better history. But individually, we can choose to follow God and obey Him now. We can choose a better history, similar to the examples mentioned in the faith chapter of Hebrews chapter 11. Is God calling you? That's what Jesus meant by the elect. It's for the sake of those whom He has called in this life, the courageous few who are willing to obey God. For the sake of those few, he will intervene to prevent mankind from total annihilation. Please read our eye-opening booklet, Armageddon and Beyond, at tomorrowsworld.org. This exciting booklet reveals details about traumatic events prophesied to happen very soon, but goes beyond that to explain how you can choose a better history. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.